All right, we have to take the derivative of this function in order to find its critical numbers. Let's do that um, down here a little bit. Since we don't have a lot of room, I'm just going to recopy this. Okay, so let's start. Um, what is the derivative of this function? Derivative of sine is cosine. When I do the derivative of this, it's really a product rule, right? It's this times this. And let's remember that there are some brackets around here, okay? Or else we'll get a sine error later on. Uh, the derivative of this is 1 minus 0, so just 1, and times this factor left alone, plus this factor left alone, times the derivative of cos x, which is minus sine x. Let's clean this up a little bit. Uh, cos x minus cos x plus x sine x. Whoops. That's x, um, it's actually minus x sine x. So minus x sine x plus pi sine x. And we have cos x minus cos x, those cancel. Minus minus makes positive x sine x minus pi sine x. And right now I'm thinking maybe I shouldn't have, I shouldn't have multiplied those out. That was uh, that wasn't to my advantage. So I'm just going to go back and uh, factor it back out. So it'll be x minus pi times sine x. We always like to have our derivatives factored because when we solve the critical numbers, we have to solve f prime of x equal to zero. And having something factored being equal to zero makes it much easier to solve. We'll see that right now. So let's solve the derivative equal to zero to find our critical points. That implies that uh, x minus pi times sine x equals zero. And the reason I was saying before it's nice to have a factored expression equal to zero is because you just set each factor individually equal to zero. If this is zero, that means x is equal to pi. And if sine x equals zero, that means x is actually n times pi, where n is uh, any integer. The symbol we use for integers is z, right? z can be, uh, is the set of all positive or negative integers and zero as well. So these are our critical numbers. Notice when n is equal to 1, x is equal to pi here. So um, we could really summarize both of these solutions just by saying x is equal to n pi. Now let's go back to the question and see what we need to do here. Um, find all critical points of this function in this interval, minus 3 pi over 2 to 5 pi over 2. All right, well, um, let's do that down here. So if we draw a little number line here, let's say this is 0 um, minus pi, positive pi, uh, 2 pi, minus 2 pi. And th these, this would be minus pi over 2, pi over 2, uh, 3 pi over 2 and minus 3 pi over 2. Now what was that interval we're supposed to work on again? Minus 3 pi over 2 to 5 pi over 2. So that begins right here and ends, well we have to even go further don't we? 5 pi over 2 would be just one more over, right? If this is 3 pi, 5 pi over 2 would be right there. Uh, maybe instead of solid dots, I should actually be doing open dots. Because if you, that interval there, notice the way they wrote it. They use strict inequalities. 
Um, so I'm going to write open dots there. You see they write strict inequalities and that's the reason I'm doing these open dots. So we know that the critical numbers are basically x is equal to an integer times pi. So for example, uh, why don't I just write that out? Based on our conclusions right here, the critical numbers are like um, negative uh, 2 pi, negative 1 pi, 0 pi, which is just 0, pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, forever on in both directions, okay? So some integer times pi. Now the question is, which one of these critical numbers actually lie in this given interval? Well, we have one right here at pi, minus pi. 0 is a good one. Pi is a good one and 2 pi is good. Those are the critical numbers that lie in the given interval, minus 3 pi over 2 to 5 pi over 2. So let's write that in the uh, answer space up top. Minus pi, 0 pi, 2 pi. So minus pi, 0 pi, and 2 pi. All right. Classify each one as a local max, min, or some other kind of number. Okay, let's do, uh, we know that, uh, why don't we do a sign chart here? This is f prime. f prime is written right here. It's x minus pi times sine x. We have to think about the signs of what's of this function in there. Um, it's kind of a headache. I guess x minus pi, um, if you take a number out here, then uh, x minus pi will be definitely negative. And sine of a number in here, uh, well, let's, uh, the way I'm going to do this, um, it's kind of, uh, you can do it two ways. You can think about it, or you can just use your calculator. And I don't really feel like thinking about it, so it's not a very good example to set, I guess. But so you know, minus three pi over two is a decimal, is uh, negative four four point seven or so. So to take a number out here would be like negative four point eight. If I put negative four point eight in there, uh, let's see what we get. And by the way, my calculator is in radians here, so it uh, it works out to be a negative value. And I think all that's going to happen now is between our critical numbers. Oh, sorry, I wrote I wrote it in the wrong place. I actually uh, made a little mistake here. This so this is uh, this is negative four point one seven. Like I said, negative pi of course is negative three point one four. We should really be taking a decimal value between here and here to test this, right? Why don't we take negative three point five? If I put that inside my function here. I'd have uh, negative 3.5 minus pi, which is negative, times the sine of negative 3.5, which is positive. So this is a negative, the derivative is negative there. And then between my critical points, it's just going to alternate sine. Um, so I hope that's correct. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Plus, minus plus minus plus minus now the thing is this when at a critical point notice that this critical point it changes from decreasing to increasing so here we have a local min right remember where the derivative is negative or decreasing and where the derivative is positive or increasing at this one we're going from an increasing to a decreasing state so here we have a local max similarly here we have a local min and right here, we have a local max. So let's uh, record those answers up here. Classify each point as a local min, local max, or some other kind of critical point. One question is, I wonder if we need to find the y values. Um, let's assume not. But then again, you know what? They do say critical points. They don't say critical numbers. These are actually the critical numbers. 
Um, I think I'm being a little bit sloppy here. I really should find the y values and list these as coordinates. Because if they said critical numbers, this would be fine. But critical points, we should really um, find the y values of each of these. Why don't we just quickly do that? f of negative pi, what is that going to be? That will be 0 minus, minus 2 pi. Cosine of minus pi is, um, I should know that in my head. I'll just do it in the calculator. Okay, well, let's, let's, let me, let's just, you know, cosine, how does cosine look? Cosine starts here, right? And so it looks the same back here. So cosine, yeah, cosine is even. So cosine of minus pi is the same as cosine pi. And that's equal to negative 1, right? So it's better to do it that way than to use the calculator. So um, cosine of negative pi is negative 1. This is 2 pi. So this is negative 2 pi. So I'm going to record my first answer here as negative pi, comma, negative 2 pi. And I'm going to erase this. And I'll erase this too. I really, sh I would really should include my work at the bottom, I guess, but it's okay. Um, one second. Um, next one. What is f of zero? f of zero, sine of zero is zero. Zero minus pi is minus pi. Cos of zero is one. So we get pi. So zero comma pi is our next critical point. And um, let's get rid of all this. Let's get rid of this. The next one we have to do is what is f of pi? It's sine of pi is 0. Pi minus pi is 0. And cos of pi is, uh, is negative 1, as we saw. So this is just 0. So pi comma 0 is our next critical point. Finally, what is f of 2 pi? Sine of 2 pi is 0. 2 pi minus pi is just 1 pi. Cos of 2 pi is the same as cos of 0, which is 1. So this is minus pi. So our last critical point is 2 pi comma minus pi. And that's the, the best way to give the answer for that. So like I said, I should have written these computations at the bottom there, but I didn't want to scroll back up and down. And um, I guess these could be written a little bit more presentable. Let me take the time to do that quickly. So this is the way I would give my answer for this question. And we'll get rid of this here. All right, good enough. Now, we actually thought about these critical points, and we realized that this was a min, and this was a min, and these were maxes, right? Let me double check that. At minus pi, we have a min, and at pi, we have a min, and at 0 and 2 pi, we have local maxes. So well, let's write that, and we'll finish this question. So uh, let's, let's maybe say it like this. At minus pi, comma, minus 2 pi, and at pi, comma, 0, we have local minimums. And similarly, at those other two points, 0, comma, pi, and at uh, 2 pi, comma, minus pi, we have local maximums. Some people say local maximums and local minimums. Other people say relative maximum, relative minimums, same thing. So this is not spelled right. Um, like maybe I'm being a little bit sloppy here. I'm, F, F has a local maximum and a local min, right? Let's say that. And uh, get rid of those S's. 
All right, that completes this one. Let's uh, go on to the next one.